Okay. Hi, I'm Seamless. Today is Monday, which means it's time for a new track from Scratch Stream, and today I'm going to be continuing the hard style track. Um, I'm pretty sure the second I hit play, I'm going to have CPU problems, and if I do, I will show you the solution that I have prepped for this. Uh, but so far, I've got uh, this, which is kind of loud, although I believe I've correctly balanced my voice now, so if you're at a comfortable level where my voice is currently playing, then this should not be that bad. Although it might be. It might be. I don't know. We'll find out. Playing in three, two, one. Nice. And then this is this part. My modulator. I have no idea why the CPU is fine, honestly. But I'll show you the solution I was going to do anyway, just in case you had a similar issue. So if you go to File Settings, and then go to Project Settings, uh, there's this Time Base option here. Currently it's at 96, you can go all the way to 960, and then you can go down to 24. But this is essentially is the zoom resolution of your project. If I were to go to 960, It breaks everything. Well, what it's, what it's doing right now is as re sort of recalculating where where everything is inside the inside the uh, playlist. Uh, and when that's done, we'll find. Here we go. All right. And as you can see, the CPU is going insane, and that's because this uses a lot more CPU because we can zoom a lot farther farther into stuff like audio. We can get really far. That's what that does. Um, if we go down lower than that, say twenty four. Then this dramatically cuts the CPU capabilities, but also dramatically reduces how far I can zoom in. This is the farthest. So that reduces the CPU usage quite a bit. In fact, that's like a 30% CPU drop right there. Um, so that's what I was going to do. However, it appears not to matter. I don't really know why. Haunting the glitch camera back some of the Sanchez, and actually I'm not totally sure why that's not doing that either. I don't know why anything works. Um, so, uh, this is the stage where I've got kind of the sound design that I want, and I got the progression that I want, at least a part of it. Um, I'm probably going to change all of that later, but for the time being, let's work on arrangement. And today, I'm going to show you my research. <laughs> so here are some tracks. Um, because this, okay, so up here... I don't, okay, this one is a noise controller track. I'm pretty sure this is the anthem from Climax 2014, the source code of creation. And uh, it's a, that is, this is a, um, a track from Datuikas. I don't know, I don't know what, which one it is or whatever. And I think this is an older noise controller track. I'm not actually going to play it because I don't want to uh, get caught with YouTube copyright. But um, let's... Uh, Stephen O'Leary, Leary, L-E-A-R-Y, that's my last name. Anyway, uh, but this is what I'm using to um, determine my arrangement. And if you've been following me, if you've been following me on, uh, if you've been following me on uh, Facebook, then you might have seen a post that I made asking, like, does every hard style track have five drops? And a whole bunch of people said, it's not drops, they're called climaxes, or anti-climaxes, and that's fine, you can have your names, it's whatever. And, um, the, uh, you kind of see what I'm talking about, though. Like, this is, uh, if you zoom, zoom in a bit, make it, make it a bit bigger. So, like, intro, 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 drop, intro, 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 drop, big ass break, 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 intro, 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 drop, break, 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 drop, break, 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 drop, just so much. And, like, this, this is, like, three different songs. Uh, yeah, this is, the, this, this is the Tweakers track, right? Yeah. And this, this song, this song got me, the Tweakers one, because it really is, like, three different tracks. And the people... Um. Uh, people talk about people don't make that assumption about a lot of stuff. You know, a lot of, of electro, a lot of big room, a lot of pretty much main electro and house stuff because the intros and the drops and like the melodic parts and the drops have very little to do with each other, which is by design, and that's you know plenty true about hard style. But like in the beginning of this song, there's a progression that you never see again. It's not even related to what the progression is later. There is a progression. There is like a big, big euphoric melodic thing that goes down like right here somewhere. But like 
this might as well be a different song. Like, it starts here. There's like this is like a guitar part comes in and it becomes the whole thing. And like over here, it's like another track. I, I, I whatever I guess, but it's just interesting. Um, then there's this one. This track is a bit more homogenous, where like it has an intro, it does have some weird shit going on, and then it has the theme, but it sticks to the theme the whole time. It just does it a lot, which is okay. This track is the one that I'm actually going to base today's um, uh, today's uh, fucking track on, my arrangement. Um, this one works more or less the way that I expect sort of normal tracks, although everything in Hardstyle is just a little bit more extreme than regular tracks. And to that, what I mean is, like, a normal track, this would be the intro, and then this would be the song, and then the song would end, like, over here somewhere. Like, uh, it's actually not even that long. It's five, five-ish minutes. It's pretty regular. Um, for even whatever non hardstyle tracks. But what I'm talking about is that, like, this intro right here is your typical DJ intro. Um, DJ intros, some of you might not actually be aware about this, but a lot of these songs that start off with just like a kick or a snare or something, this is for DJs to mix their songs. This is not actually the intro of their song. And in fact, like, we could kind of see where the intro hits, which is right here. This is where the intro begins. Everything before that is the DJ intro. It's like, pfft, DJ intro. This is just so that they make the mix pretty easy. And then um, here's, we have intro. And this is, uh, really, is you know, this this particular one started to display the, there's a, like a vocal hook and then there's a lead. And then the leads and the vocal hook kind of come in and they're starting to hit and they, and they play on. And that's pretty good. And then it rises and then there's a drop. This is a full on drop. This is the full full energy right here happening. And then there's another break, and this break is interesting because this break essentially restarts the track, only now it, full, it plays the full progression. This place didn't really progress. It, put, it played like the first bar of the progression, and it stayed on that. Um, it stayed on that, So and then it just kind of stuck on that, and then the, the drop was also very mono-key. You know, it stuck at the, the whatever the tonic was, and then that was cool. And then over here, the intro, the intro again began. And this is the progression. It has a full progression. It actually goes through different chord transfer, uh, modulations and that whole thing. That's what this is. And then when it gets here, this is the melodic drop. Still the same intensity, same energy, just with melody. And this is interesting. So if you look at this, um, normally you see a drop, you, you normally get your four... Uh, four groups of four kind of thing going on, and then maybe you have a second half of the drop. This is an intro. Like this is just this is just rising right here. This is this is introducing the, the melody that kind of thing, and this is just rising and rising and rising, and then it drops. And then there's this weird third part, this weird third group of two kind of unevenness. But really, what this is is another rise. It rises, and then it hits the end here where it, it uh, breaks, and then there's just like it basically intros again, and then it hits again here with um the the same basically the same content that was in the drop here uh th this rise kind of happens again and there's a break and then there's this outro which is just another drop it's kind of like the drop at the beginning it's like a weird um i guess you could kind of call this a dj outro but like uh, the more normal dj outros you can even you can you actually straight up can see where the dj outro is up here where everything kind of disintegrates and then that again makes it easier to transfer to the other song. This isn't actually in the song. That was me recording something else by accident. So is that. These, these are where the songs end. And this this track does it too. It just happens to go through a drop first before it does it. Which is kind of interesting. Uh, so a lot about this is this track anyway. Which was... I'm pretty sure this was a noise controller track. This might have been another Tweakus track. But um, it's more normal. It's more like what I expect a song to be. It does still have some weirdness. Like, the sheer just length of this intro is insane. And to have a drop in it. Like, I know that some intros and some regular songs, that, like, in genres that I'm used to, regular songs, genres that I'm used to um, do this. You know, they have a kind of, like, a faux drop where they, they have the beat. They got some kind of thing going on. And um, that, uh, then it stops. Then there's an intro again. It's just, this went on for forever. Just nuts. Like, the total intro, we're talking uh, 16, 32, uh, 40, 8, 60, 54, a lot. <laughs> Just a lot of bars. And uh, then, you know, the, basically from here on, it's it's a sensible track. Like, I could actually, I could make sense of this in terms of the track that I would understand. It's just, just yeah. So anyway, but like, I, I, you could look at this and you can make a plan. 
And actually, what I just did here, the, the sort of analysis that I just did this track, is what I recommend people do whenever they ask, like, well, how do I how do I write whatever track style, whatever a dubstep track, you know, the hard style track, how do, how do I do this? Do exactly what I just did there, where we take it apart, identify what happens at what time for how long, and that kind of thing. Uh, what you didn't see me do is actually listen to this and do things like determine what's going on in the transitions. And uh, that's sort of the next step. I just sort of, I did that already. And it's also stuff I'm used to, so... You kind of you'll find out when I when I do it. And uh, <laughs> DJ intros and outros. Here's a sort of a tangent about DJs. A lot of things that it find themselves in modern songwriting are weirdly the product of what DJs do, like side chaining. Side chaining is a thing that existed because back in like the late '90s. Or uh, whenever this, whenever there were house DJs, house DJs would just push the songs really loud out their systems, and either with clipping or with limiting, um, the really the big bass of the kick would crush everything and cause ducking, and that was an accident. But people liked it; they liked how it sounded. And then uh, people, who, even if they didn't know that, you know, and people who were new to the scene, who aren't aware of what is a mistake and what is not a mistake, they hear that and they go, that's dope, or they just think that's how that is. And so when they make their own things, they go to they, they go to mix their songs and just kind of put the pumping's not there. Oh, they must do it manually. And then that's side-chaining. Side-chaining, I mean, that kind of thing, yeah. And other stuff like um, this multiple song thing in, in, in a track. This is, actually, this is actually something that I did myself when I was first learning how to write songs. I would um, write, I wrote a whole bunch of drum and bass tracks back in like 2006 that were like three songs in one because I thought that's what people wanted to hear in, in, a, in a song. And this is because I'd listen to d b radio, not understand what DJs are because I'm a noob. And I just think I can't determine when one song ends and another song begins, which is a good job, DJs. But like, I actually honestly think that certain changes in aesthetic and certain mixes because, you know, for the most part, if you really, really, really cannot tell that a new song is coming, it's because it's in the same key, same tempo, same more or less everything. And when they're playing together, it's not actually that confusing to consider that they might have been the same song. In some cases, they actually are the same song. But for the most part, they're not. And so that meant that I would write songs that felt like a whole bunch of songs in one because I thought that the transitions of different shit was like what you did. And I liked it. But it also was really weird and made, a lot of, made for a lot of schizophrenic tracks. Which I guess people liked anyway. <laughs> uh, this is very interesting. Okay, let's actually do some stuff. So, the part that's gonna be weird about this, there's gonna be two. There's gonna be lots of things that'll be weird about this. Just, the two that I can think of off the top of my head is that I gotta like partition the theme off into a bunch of stuff. Actually, you want to see something cool? Sorry to give you a random tangent on this kind of shit, but uh, this is actually a very useful trick in FL. Let's add a marker. Where's song start? Oh, that's awesome. That was an option to do that because I didn't know that. Well, that's okay. Let's just add one and call it start. Oh, yeah, I got to like actually song start. Cool. Ah. Uh... Oh, excuse my nose. Uh, <laughs> this is his streams DJ intro my gigantic talk I just gave you're a hilarious person I forgot to start my timer so this means uh, I gotta pay attention to the clock anyway um, what I just did here is that I basically created like a palette area where the song is not there if I hit stop notice that it goes to the start and here's another fun thing is that if I render the song it will render it from here as the beginning of the song and um, it will disregard everything that's here. Now, I usually do this anyway, where I'll just put this at the end of a track, but it's actually just a lot better for the, for the playlist to be segmented in such a way that it like understands that things that are on this part of the track are not in the track. So I can have a literal palette, which is just really cool. Anyway, the two, the two things that we have to do are that I want to like partition the um, the theme to be its own thing when it, when it happens. And then there's like this, there's a whole bunch of stuff I gotta do in the intro, like the, the snare builds, white noise sweeps, a whole bunch of stuff that I just never do in my songs. And my whole goal here is that I want to sound as close to um, one of these kinds of songs as possible. 
And with that in mind, I am going to do that. I am going to actually figure out how to do the, the bog standard. I mean, I already know how to do it, but I just got to do them in such a way that they're not betraying my unfamiliarity with the genre. What the hell is... Okay. Before I do that, though, I'm going to try and build... Um, yeah. All right. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So, uh, I haven't played this part for a while. That's because this is the main thing. But this is like me partitioning the, the super saws. And that's just not going to work anymore. Because uh, a lot of this is layered in ways that are sort of insane. Uh, I'm going to keep this over here for a second. So, there's a bunch of stuff in here. And I'm actually going to split this by channel. I always forget where this goddamn option is. Is it in here? Yes, it is. Bam. All right, and is, is there more than one thing in here? Nope. Is there more than one thing in here? Nope. Okay, so everything is separated. What are you? You're the kick. And you're the additional kick stuff, so this is percussion stuff. There's a whole button for that. Oh, for the uh, for the start song start thing. Yeah, yeah. Is it? Uh, there's a lot of macro stuff. It's probably in here, isn't it? It's prepare for performance mode, which kind of does that. Um, what was it doing? Oh yeah. So, uh, which thing is <laughs> this? Is this is the part of why this isn't gonna work anymore? Because a lot of a lot of these. You know, I'm just gonna do. I'm just gonna do this new. So we have a bunch of parts here. We've got... And then we have this thing. I have some ideas about some variations on that as well. Irony being that a lot of the people who decided to take my melody and make their own version of it actually did the kind of the stuff I was going to do. So it's sort of interesting that it's that intuitive. Uh, so these are actually, I mean, the patches that make these are layered themselves. Now, I don't know if I want to actually make the lead. I guess I want to uh, want to lean in kind of with these these things. Yeah, sample the ice water. <laughs> How do I make my playthrough videos follow the cursor without stepping? Uh, when I when I play it, I play through a song and I hold down shift and zero. Shift zero is the center command, and if you just hold it down, it just stays on the thing. I'm just holding it down the whole time I'm recording. Well, that must be the reverb. I got rid of the automation clips for that. Okay, so start with you first. It's actually going the pattern since so I can tell what I'm doing. All right, so you. So, uh, Y here is the envelope amount, which is why when I went backwards, it kind of did that. Because center value means it's off, and then it's negative and positive. And then Y is filter amount. Had that backwards, whatever. Um, so let's do you first. It's been a while since I did this. Uh, not, okay, so I already had these engaged, but I'm gonna do, that, do them again just because I don't want to fuck this up. 
Minimum value, 50%. I could go for the long, the longness here. try harmonizing it but that'd be kind of weird I might get that later just to make if I want to make it more epic now this guy uh, I want to I want to kind of like lead into this though and this actually needs to be more sure um, so in the beginning you're muted because I uh, muted you. You don't need to be here anymore. So you're the same, you're the same. So just, yeah. Same deal. Hard style is all about saw clipping cowbell. That is good. You're funny. You're a funny dude. I appreciate your humor. So that is because of the randomness and the, the ramping. Like I'm okay with the clicking, but I want less of that. See the okay ramping and de-click do kind of different things. I was going to do it a little bit because of the phase differences that I'm creating here. Yeah. <laughs> so, did I already? I did. So, this first one. So I want to like ease into this thing. So I'm going to keep it tonic in the beginning. And basically just be all mysterious. Am I in the right split? I am. This guy will have a little bit more, but not that much more. And just for kicks, let's have you come down here too. So you ready? Here, here's one of the things that end up happening in um, the people's remixes.
a little heavy-handed, but I mean. What key am I in? I'm in G minor. F sharp minor. <laughs> nice. So this whole the whole purpose of this section is uh, before we get even get to this part, this is like in the middle of the song. Let me let me let's bring back the um, arrangement guy here. So this is this part of the song right here. This. This is what I'm making. Uh, so let's put this up in the way that's actually represented. So we have two. Two big important parts. So up until this point, there really wasn't progression. There was there was some melody, there were notes, but it was mostly just on the, the, the one tonic. I didn't really go anywhere. And then we're going to add in the new section, which is it's introducing actually a progression. We're going to actually progress with the melody. And then it's just going to it's going to build up, build up, build up. And then there's going to be a big rise. And uh, then the drop happens, which is just going to be the same thing, but with the kick. Um, that's uh, That's what's up. I'm doing this part first because I have all the parts for it already, more or less. I mean, I'm doing it now, but you know what I mean. Uh huh. And uh, yeah. So I might actually come in. So this is this is all drop stuff because like this is the copies of it. Like this is this pattern here, and these are the leads. So leads will happen during the drop. I don't actually know that this will be precisely what I'm doing the, the, during the actual rise part, but that's going to be what's up. Oh, I felt good. All right. Something, some kind of rise, I don't know what yet, and then uh, I don't even have any of this stuff on because I muted it all. Yeah. I recorded something retarded, I put it right for the drop. I actually had that already. My modulator. <laughs> Dirt, dirt, dirt. Uh, I feel like I've heard this track before. <laughs> yeah, I am just. I am really trying hard right now to make just the most standard, unoriginal, obvious, hard style track ever. That's what's up. Of course, not everyone can agree on what that is, but for, I got. I got my goals. I have my. I have my. I have my reading. So this is kind of accurate. Uh. <laughs> I'm recording a modulator. This is my modulator. Hmm, they're trying to make hard style. Is this news? Yeah, it's okay. Um, losing my track. Oh yeah. So now the lead. I don't. I don't necessarily. I don't think I want to come in right into that so fast. I want some version of it though. Hmm. 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 
I could try and um do like a these. Kind of like building up into it. Yeah. Actually, never mind. I kind of. Someone said it needs more Vanguard VST, and that's funny because I actually used to have that a long time ago. The fuck was I doing? I keep I was like I I cannot pay attention to what I'm doing for some reason. Should probably come in a little earlier, just because this is starting to get real over here. Okay, this apparently needs to have this going on. Actually, I'm gonna. should probably turn it a little bit before. part of the rest too short probably um, there's a lot about this like what when what happens where I'll change when I have more stuff in there so that I know what it sounds like I might not I might forego doing exactly like what the other arrangement was doing it is not and like sort of integrate the rise into there and then just kind of hit it hit it like in there so just have like a new rise and then psh, psh, psh. even do one of those reverse kicks people keep telling me to do <laughs> Add strings in that part. You know what? I you know you're that's a good idea. I haven't done messed around with that stuff in a bit, so let's do that. Let's have like a string off. It's not the word I wanted to say, but that's that's what I'm doing. Uh, I'm not gonna use Patrick for this. I'm actually just gonna put it up in there. Where is it? I know I know I know you live. I tested you. Uh, okay. Look how tiny that is. This will actually probably be really terrible if I leave it like that. So let's, um, but I don't want to make a bridge. I'll, I'll try and deal with that. Let's see, let's see if I can. In the meantime, holy balls, it's tiny. I don't even have pianos installed. God damn it. I gotta do that. I forgot about that. Do 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 What time is it? 336. Do 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 Let's start with, um, let's start with cellos. I like cellos. Do I want to do the weird slur stuff? I don't know if I care about the bow change. It sounded pretty good when I was doing it before. Ah, whatever. Let's do it. Let's do it. I don't know if I want slurs there, though. So that's round robin. I don't know if I need round robin. Whatever. Go medium or go home. <clears throat> Be 
people are wondering, this is the Play uh, thing. This is the software that East West Quantum Leap uses to deliver their samples. There it is. It's weird that some of them worked and some of them didn't. Um, okay, so one thing I have to remember is what parameters actually control volume on these things. I don't have the manual. Or is the manual, I might have the manual. I don't have the manual. It's on the stupid hard drive. Yeah, when you when you buy these things, they send them to you on a hard drive because the the the, the, the size of these libraries is insane. Yeah, this is the, the hard drive it came in on. All the documentation's on there too. <sighs> so just for fun, actually, how much did that, how much does that change? I forgot that changed the last part of the progression. Um. So I want to keep that one the way it is, and then this is going to be the, uh... I don't know if I want to go that far, but let's try it. Cadential 4.6. The only reason why I know it's called a Cadential 4.6, that might not even be what it is, but it's some kind of neoclassical ending on some things. And the reason why I know it's called that is because I was in music theory class one day and they were having us write box stuff. Classical music theory, as you'll learn, if you ever learn theory, is very rules-based. And it's based on things like you put a note here, this means you can only put so many notes as or that or on top of it or around it, that kind of thing. And so it's basically like once you are given once you are given a style, a time period, and an artist, you basically are having a puzzle to solve. And I would solve my puzzles by having this credential, this business at the end there, because I just liked how that sounded. And um, the teacher came by one time and was like, ooh, nice credential 6-4. And I was like, yes. Yes, it is. Pretending like I knew what I was talking about. How long am I putting on letting my beard grow? Forever. It was originally the plan, and then I got it in my head that I wanted to cut it off uh, a year and a half ago. And then I did, and then I immediately regretted it. This, this is a year and a half. So, we'll see what happens. The S is silent. <laughs> That's my name. Now, now that I've done this... Actually, this is going to be my favorite part. For those of you who remember um, what it was like when I made the uh, Some Kind of Dubstep track with Sarah Labrie, the orchestra singer, the opera singer, um, and I did the piano part in the middle, it's kind of what I'm going to do, but with strings. Okay, so how do I want to do this? There's a lot of ways I can do this. I guess I want to do the MIDI, MIDI way. Um, there's, I could use colors. But that actually gets a lot more confusing than less confusing. You'll see what I mean in a second. Where the hell's video? Yeah, there it is. So let's see. Port one. Input port one. For that, for that matter, output auto maps. This would help if I were organized. Okay. Cool, good. Processing, settings. Now, this means that, oh wait, I gotta set the channel. Um, one, I put one, two. So now when I play the MIDI, MIDI out, this dude, where's the keyboard? It triggers the thing. This is so that when I load more than one string in there, I can have independent control over them. That's the purpose of having done that. The other thing I could have done is that I could have um, changed the MIDI color, like the color of the notes, because these represent individual MIDI channels. And you can do that. It's just that there's not a lot of there's not a lot of um, control of 
certain ideas and that's just sort of just it's just it's not that much worse but if you use like a lot it can get really bad now uh alt l auto legato control g glue It's really quiet. Now, this is why I had to remember what the hell the controls are, because it's not just the MIDI, it's not just the modulation wheel. There's a modulation wheel, and then there's MIDI CC11, I think, which is just straight up volume, and then there's another one. See, so something else you can do with the, the with the MIDI out is that I can actually just set up this, this, this one, but just be like, here's CC11 now. What was the other one? Um, I want to say it was 64, but I'm pretty sure that's just the sustain. Uh, let's check though. Where's brass parameters? This gives us all the MIDI. So 11 is just expression controller. I think it, I think it was just straight up volume. Yeah, so that 64 is sustain. Maybe it's four, four and 11. I remember them being kind of close. 39 is main volume. So you see one is the control wheel, which I think I have to actually set in here now. Maybe CC one and just for shits, let's do mini CC four. Ah, it was the, it was the control wheel. Okay. Ain't hard to start without didgeridoo. And, um, I guess I don't need that controller. All right, so I guess I'm too low. Actually, this, this, this voice is too low. Wham! Oh shit, it's Legato, I forgot. <laughs> I'm a smart person. Legato means it can only play one voice at a time. Uh, so if I want the two of them to do this, I need to actually do clone it. Well, all right, let's be, let's be, uh, realistic about this, which means that I need a cello to do that, and then I need a, the next step up, a viola. Let's do, do you have bow change? You do have bow change. Let's do the same thing. This is the exact same, um, patch type. This is a viola. Am I distorting? Distortion I master? Dr. Drum is the best DAW. Someone in the chat said that. And now I guess I said that. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, so higher voice can be Viulia. So clone, channel two. This is how you do the MIDI outs. This doesn't need to be that low. So we only have, we don't really have that much in terms of bases. Let's do legato, slur, 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 slur. slow slur, let's do this. I don't, really need, I don't really need round robin on bases. <laughs> um, yeah, so your channel three, output five, six. Dude, three. I guess I want you to be the same thing, so it's a lower voice. 
I'm going to do a little bit more arrangement on that, but... Too low. Not even close. What's the issue here? No. One, two, three, four, five, six. There it is. It's very quiet. So this is going to be interesting. Uh, if I want to, okay, I could do the um, the whole pizzicato thing, you know, the people were making fun of uh, the, for me for doing the sell the sale track. Boop, 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 boop. Could do that. Um, I don't know if I want to though, because I start I kind of bring it in with the synths, so that that's just sort of there that way. Uh, let's do. I'll just do some pretty thing on top. It doesn't really need to be um, intense. What kind of fun stuff do we have for, for these? Like, we have... Um, like... Harmonics and stuff. And it's Mercado. It's not really a fact. It's just kind of... Actually, these would be fun to have some slurs. Where is the slowest slur? Staccato slur. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, I guess it does, but still. Like, out of 12, let's do this. Forget the Hearthstyle trailer doing her orchestra track. I actually did that already. If you didn't catch the FL12 trailer, that was me. Or, uh, three tracks from Scratch ago? Tracks from Scratch. Tracks, trash from Scrax. I think that's why I tried to say just then. Uh, yeah, I forgot about this part where I got to jiggle. Jiggle the knobs. I jiggle so many knobs. All right. This is four. And while I'm at it, uh, four output, seven, eight. A slur is when you don't articulate a note, right? Um, a slur is... Portamento. So it's like, you know, instead of going do do, you go do that kind of thing. The orchestra strings are actually kind of famous for this particular ability because uh, instead of synthesizing it and just pitch bending it, they actually recorded the slurs between the notes. And so you have between certain notes, like actually acceptable ranges, and it's like, a little insane, to be totally honest. So if I can get, get to do it. How low am I right now? Very low. Yeah. Save the track a bit. Save the track. Save the world. Been watching Heroes recently. That show had such a good start. My God. doing there. Now the, the fun the fun thing is gonna happen when some of these notes kind of lead in a little bit on the on the attack, which means they'll actually sound off time. So I'm gonna have to like sort of shift it a bit when I play them on the rest of the track, which will be the next part because we're at the end of the part today's, this part, which I think is like 11 or 12 or something. We're getting getting kind of high in the parts here. Um, actually, we're not even close to that. It's like eight or something, whatever. Numbers, it's a number, at least that, I know for the truth. Uh, for those of you watching on YouTube, if you have any questions about this, please let me know. And as usual, 
Have a nice day. I have something in my eye. Hmm.